Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today I am going to show you guys how to convert any USB device into a wireless USB device. So let's get started. Now I made a video like this a couple of months ago called uh, USB over network. And I'm taking a similar approach to that video, but instead of using a Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 4, we are gonna be using a Raspberry Pi Zero this time with a little tiny USB hub on top. Now this is optional, this is not really needed, but if you wanna be able to use multiple devices, having a little tiny USB hub that plugs right on top of the Raspberry Pi Zero is great. Otherwise, you could use one of these little tiny adapters, which is a micro SD to a regular USB-A, so you could plug in devices if you only plan to just share one, which in most cases, one USB device is enough. Now Raspberry Pi Zero is pretty affordable. You could probably pick them up for $10, for the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which is the wireless device. And for the SD card, it could be any size from one gig and up because we're not gonna be using a full desktop. We're only gonna be using minimal install of Raspberry Pi OS. Now using this method, you could actually turn one of these little joystick devices into a wireless device, a webcam into a wireless device if you're planning to put multiple cameras for Zoom or something, I don't know. And you could turn basically anything that requires a USB signal, printer, CNC machine, 3D printers, anything into a wireless thing like this. Now, I've used this method on my Raspberry Pi 4 with an ethernet setup for months and it is extremely reliable. I've had it at the point where I had something plugged in for almost a week and it did not disconnect unless I disconnected it manually. But otherwise, if you're planning to build something that you need a wireless setup for, especially like a printer or something like that, this method will work out great for you. Now, before I start, I do wanna say a word about my sponsor. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mask yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you want to be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime. I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs. If I don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my ISP to know what I'm doing, I wouldn't want them to know either. So they have no logs whatsoever. It also allows for P2P. And if you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. My main use is scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so I could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the States. But yeah, you could do that with this as well. And best of all, if you're using the link down in the description below, you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money bank guarantee you also get three free months so really you have nothing to lose all right so now that we are back so the first thing we need to do is install raspberry pi os on here so we're going to pull up imager and select the image that we want which is the light version and then from there before we jump into next we are going to go into the advanced menu uh, set up our host name scroll down a little bit set up our ssh then set up our wi-fi our region and our time zone once you're done with that hit next and let it install to the sd card once everything is completed, plug it into your Raspberry Pi and we are gonna start this up right now. Once you plug this guy in, just give it a couple of minutes to boot up because it's gonna take, um, I don't know, five minutes or so to resize the hard drives and everything. Otherwise you could SSH right into it. Now I already know the IP address of this Raspberry Pi Zero, so I'm gonna be able to pull it up. Otherwise you would have to search for it by either plugging it into a display or looking for it through your router. Now there is another way where you could just ARP and pull up the MAC address on this device, which is a little bit easier as well. But I'm just gonna jump to a point where I'm logging into the device. So it should be up by now. And let's see, SSH, 
pi at, oh, yep, there it is. There we have it, zero hub. That's the host name I gave it, and I know that this is the device. So to get this working, we are gonna be using a software called Virtual here. This is by far the easiest software to get everything set up. Now I do have another video on how to do it without using this software and you're manually installing everything, but this is the easiest way between a compatibility with uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS because the client works very well. So first thing we need to do is head over to USB server and find the version that you're gonna be using. So in my case, it's gonna be virtual here, USB server Linux for ARM. So I'm gonna grab this and copy link location, okay? And then I'm gonna do a W get and paste that into here. All right, and there we have it. Now that I have it on my Raspberry Pi Zero, I'm gonna do a chmod convert it so it's executable vh usb d arm now this is a daemon and once you enable this it's going to be able to start pulling any device and you be able to share it so the first thing you want to do is make it so it's bootable every time you plug in the device there are multiple ways to do this you could either use system d or you could just put into rc local which is something super easy that i could do so in my case i'm just going to put into rc.local so we're gonna do sudo nano etc rc.local. Now in here, head over right before the exit and you want to go to home slash pi slash virtual here. Uh, what is this? Virtual here, USB D arm, USB D A R M dash B ampersand. Now this will make it run in the background so it won't freeze up this installation and this will also allow the installation to keep going. Once you're done with that, we are all set. Just to double check everything is working, we can either reboot or just type that in. Whoop, I don't have sudo. And now that that is running in the background, anything I plug into this USB hub should be detected now. So what I'm gonna test right now, I am gonna run downloads sudo the actual client so i already downloaded the client go over to the client and you could actually find the linux version so there's a linux gui version and there's a different support for it so i already installed this and i just have to do virtual here run it in sudo and here is the prompt so i have two one is my raspberry pi 4 which i call the rpi hub and this is the new one well it did pick it up but it's not showing up because i saw the two ip addresses so auto find hub oh you know why i do not have anything plugged in even though my host name is called zero hub the device is still called raspberry pi hub by default so let me plug in the first device i want to try is a mass storage device it's a little usb thing so if i was to plug it in yep there you go it detects it as a usb flash drive and if i go to use this device yep there you go it shows up EXX7. That's when I was installing ESX7 onto the Raspberry Pi, but it does show up and I can see all the files. And this is doing it completely wireless over the Raspberry Pi Zero. So it is working. Now I am gonna eject this device and I'll close this out and I stop using this device. Okay, I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna plug in uh, Xbox controller. This is the old 360 Xbox controller that uses USB. I actually still use this guy all the time for any games. Uh, let's plug this in. There you go, it says controller. Use this device. Okay. Do I have any, I know it's working, but I don't think I have anything to test controllers on um, Ubuntu, like how Windows would have it. Let's see, sudo app install js test gtk so if this is correct and i don't have this on microsoft drivers i should be able to work with the xbox controller okay js test gtk it does detect my xbox there you go and if i was to go here yeah look at that everything is working all the buttons pressed and it's actually very responsive on all these buttons <laughs> there we have it guys if you wanted to test any other controllers maybe let's see if i unplug this guy will it disable it virtual here doesn't see it anymore 
I thought this would pick it up, but let's try our joystick. So if I plug in this joystick, there you go, T-Flight Hodas. I'm gonna pop this in, use this device. Used by you, let's uh, run this joystick again. There you go, Thrustmaster. And double click. Yeah. All the controls are working if I was to click. Now I fully have a wireless joystick setup or wireless controller or wireless mass storage device if I needed to or USB camera, whatever it may be. I'm running everything through this little Raspberry Pi Zero. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I did really enjoy doing this because I do have use for this. I do have a driving simulator set up with the steering wheels, gas pedals, and everything. And if I hook it together up with my VR, this would be great to be able to run all the wires wirelessly because you got the handbrake, pedals, um, everything, you know, added up together. This will be great. Now, also, Virtual Here Client is demo, so you're only allowed to use one device at one time or at that time. So if you really needed to, you could purchase the full license from Virtual Here and you could handle as many devices as you want. But in my case, it really depends what you're going to be using it for. And it is locked. If you get the, if you do purchase the license, it is locked to this device. So you can't install it on somewhere else and hoping it will work. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts.